Hey there, YouTube. This is Vargas XX78 uh, with my beautiful girlfriend. Hello. And um, I, I apologize for not having recorded any video in the last. It's been actually a good uh, three weeks since I recorded a video. So I'm gonna. We're gonna make it up to you guys by rec uh, talking about uh, three movies. How many? Three. Three movies that we've gone to see in the last um, couple of days, actually. Uh, a lot of really awesome movies came out over here, and uh, we wanted to talk about them and give a, give you guys our review. Uh, first movie that we went to see this uh, these last couple of days was one that you might get an idea of, and if not, um, here's another idea. Ooh, my girlfriend got this uh, this cup for me, and I really really appreciate it because she knows how, how how big of a comic book geek I am. And the first movie we went to see, in case you haven't guessed, is Man of Steel, the Christopher Nolan, uh, Zack Snyder reboot of the Superman franchise. Um, we went to see it, and uh, I thought it was awesome. Did you like it? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a complete reboot. They, they changed um, the costume design for Superman. Uh, it, it's basically like Superman Begins. Uh, they rebooted everything. Kind of like what they did with the Batman trilogy, but they retold Superman's origin, uh, at least in the way that Krypton is. It's, it wasn't the scientific Krypton that John Barn uh, created when he did his reboot, and it's not the uh, the other kind of Krypton that was in the Silver Age or um, in the Golden Age. Uh, this one even had like a flying bug thing. But uh, same story, uh, Russell Crowe played uh, Jor-El, uh, Clark Kent's dad, and uh, that whole sequence with, with uh, Krypton and how they send Superman to Earth I thought was really cool. Uh, very awesome. Uh, they introduced the new General Saad, and um, Kevin Costner played uh, Jonathan Kent, which I thought was also really cool. I think mm -hmm. uh, both of those actors really did a really good job. Diane Lane played, uh, oddly enough, Diane Lane, like Lewis Lane, hmm. but Diane Lane uh, played Martha Kent, so all tar uh, really a big all-star cast, uh, a lot of changes to it, uh, Amy Adams, who uh, I for had forgotten, uh, appeared in an episode of Smallville, uh, is the new Lewis Lane, and I don't remember the guy that's done Superman uh, in any other movies, so do you remember him being in any other movies? Yeah. No, him. The, the guy that plays uh -huh. Superman. No. no. Someone told me that he, uh, he was in Immortals, but I've never seen that movie, so... But I think I think he did a really good job as Superman. He had the look of Superman. He had the build of Superman. Uh, yeah. Yeah, even though uh, my girlfriend says that uh, there's this scene where he's in the fisherman boat and he goes to save these guys on an oil rig. And uh, she said he kind of looked like Wolverine. He had the, mm -hmm. the build like Wolverine and the look because he had a, a beard. Yeah. So so he kind of looks like Hugh Jackman. But uh, the new Superman uh, is British, so he, he, he hit his uh, British accent very well. Uh, he sounded uh, very American. Mm -hmm. And uh, the story is told in flashbacks. Uh, you know, they, they cut in the flashback when uh, Clark Kent's a little boy. Then a uh, story begins, and then Clark Kent is a teenager, and then the other story begins. But again, really, really cool movie. I, I liked the visual touch that uh, Zack Snyder gave to the movie. A lot of people I've heard aren't happy with the uh, with the changes in the costume, uh, because a lot of people remember the Christopher Reeves movies. Um, and uh, I'll admit I'm not a big fan of, of what DC has done to the Superman costume. But the costume in the movie looks cool. I, I especially like that they mentioned something, because uh, Lewis Lane is sitting with Superman, and uh, she asks him, what's, what's the deal with the S? And uh, Superman responds, well, it's not an S. In my planet, uh, it symbolizes hope. And Lewis Lane's like, yeah, well, in our planet, it's, uh, it's an S. And that's when, when she gives uh, Superman his name, or she starts to before he gets interrupted. But... Really, really, still, really awesome movie, packed with great special effects. I thought the the, the special effects were really awesome, especially uh, when he's flying and uh, when he's fighting against everyone. 
they don't introduce a kryptonite in this one. Uh, the way that they go about that is that uh, Superman has gotten his powers because of our yellow sun and our atmosphere. So that's what's powering him up. So, but when he travels to a Kryptonian atmosphere, when General Zod comes over, that's when he loses his powers because it's toxic to him. So they don't introduce Kryptonite, but they do figure out a way to, you know, depower him for a while. And uh, I just thought it was a really, really good movie. Again, I've heard a lot of people complain that it does feel like Batman Begins, uh, but with Superman. And a lot of people I've heard uh, just didn't like the costume changes or the fact that they made Perry White a uh, black guy with um, with Morpheus and uh, and that they they changed Jimmy Olsen into a girl. I I didn't even notice that until I heard uh, I heard it in one of the videos. But but despite it, I I thought it was really cool. Lots of action, lots of big explosions. It was a big epic Superman movie, and that's what I didn't like about Superman Returns. In Superman Returns, he fought a freaking island, and that I thought that was so stupid. I was looking forward to something big, and this movie had it. This movie had big explosions, big epic moments. Uh, my girlfriend also mentioned that someone uh, put a post that uh, this movie was DC's response to the Avengers, that uh, one guy, one powerful guy from DC was able to do what the whole Avengers team uh, also did so maybe it was a shot at Marvel but I don't care I I I I my biggest heroes are Wolverine and Batman especially Batman Batman's like oh, I'm Batman but <laughs> Superman uh, I I I watched the Christopher Reeve movies and I love the character and Superman flies and I told her that that's mm -hmm. the one thing I've, I I if, if there's one thing that I I could do is fly and I yeah and be invulnerable but be Batman at the same time. But, uh, but yeah, Man of Steel, awesome. I heard that they're working on a sequel. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. And, you know, you can see that we both really like the Superman movie. So, yeah. Uh, if you got a chance to watch it, watch it. Um, if you don't know that much about... How could you not know that much about Superman? He's like a, an American icon. But uh, if you can take off your nostal nostalgic goggles about the cartoon or the uh, animated series and so on and just look at it as its own thing and a fresh start for Superman you know go watch it I thought it was amazing and I'll, I'll definitely watch the sequel if they make it but yeah yeah I, I now I want to go to Walmart and buy one of those Superman capes because <laughs> yeah that really good movie and I'm, I'm a huge fan of Superman even though you know my big two are Batman and Wolverine got a lot of Superman uh, the other movie we went to see is a prequel of a really, really good Pixar movie, and uh, that one was Monster University. Uh, that This is the movie that uh, tells how uh, Mike Wazowski and uh, Sully met up before they, they got into Monsters, Inc., and uh, this is, uh, as the name implies, they, they both go uh, to uh, Monster University where they're uh, where they train monsters how to scare people and uh, scare little kids and uh, Mike Wazowski, I, I thought kid Mike Wazowski was beyond cute and uh, oh he was really cool and uh, he he goes to Monsters Inc when he's a little kid and uh, he decides that he wants to be a scarer even though he's not a scary monster uh, he's unbelievably cute in that scene and uh, he goes to Monster University and he meets up with uh, Sully. Who who's naturally a good scare? He's big. He's rah, he's scary. We went to see with yeah. His his whole family's been been in the scare business, so he he's a natural. So you have this this guy that really really wants it, and he studies really hard, uh, kind of going up against a guy that's just naturally a, a scare. And um, we went to see it with with her family and uh, her little two little nephews, and they got out of the movie scaring everyone like. <laughs> And they were like scaring people, and and uh, the animation on on the movie was, I thought, really cool. And it's this big, colorful movie. You would think a movie about monsters scaring little kids would be kind of dark and creepy, but it's full of color. And uh, I I actually felt 
old when I talked about the movie with uh, some coworkers because uh, I I thought the, the the plot about of the movie is kind of like uh, a movie from the late seventies, early eighties, uh, like the Revenge of the Nerds or uh, Porky's or uh, Animal House, you know, movies like that. <laughs> Not a lot of people knew what the heck I was talking about. But uh, it, the plot, it's kind of like that, but with the Monsters, Inc. spin. And uh, I, I I thought it was really, really cool. And uh, again, the animation. Pixar just, just keeps getting... Uh, we, we were watching Toy Story 1 uh, a couple of days ago, and, uh, you know, you can see that that's a, a, a very early... A computer generated movie and, and Monster Sinks, like, wow. Uh, it, it's not as epic as Wally because Wally was just beautiful, a beautiful movie to look at. And it's always Finding Nemo. Those are visually, those are my two favorite movies. But, uh, but still, uh, some stuff they do with the animation on Sully, or <laughs> they gave a really cool. Uh, homage to the uh, camp terror movies at, at near the end where uh, they get stuck on the real world. They have to scare themselves out of it so they can generate energy for the door. Uh, they also introduced the, how how and why Randall fits into Monster Inc. How he gets his rivalry mm -hmm. with Sully. Um, but yeah, really, really cool movie. Uh, I, I thought like any Pixar movie, it it, obviously, the kids are gonna like it because it's it's the you know scare thing, uh, clearly shown by our <laughs> by the kids we went with, but uh, I I liked it because it reminded me of that type of movie, but also because it does have a really good. Actually, it has a really deep message because uh, Mike Wazowski trains really hard and he really really wanted to be a scary monster, but it. It actually kind of does show, show... It has a good message, but kind of a cruel message if you think about it. Because if you really, really want something, you don't always get it. Mike Wazowski really wanted to be a scare, and he tried his best, he got good scores, but no matter how hard he wanted it, life taught him that you can't always have what you want, no matter how much you really want it. But life also compensates it by giving you good people to surround yourself with. And he got found himself a really good friend in Sully. So both of them were able to achieve something that they have never seen in that world. They were able to scare adults and break a whole bunch of uh, scare canisters. So, so yeah, I thought this movie was awesome. Great animation. What do you think about it? Did you like it? Yeah, it's so cute. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we got these cups also at uh, the movie theater, and yeah, I thought they were cool. Yeah. So if you have a chance to once to watch Monster University, uh, give it a watch because that this movie is also pretty awesome. Last movie we went to see, and we have nothing to show for it because they weren't giving any cups for that, but we went to see the premiere. Uh, two days before it actually released in 3D of World War C, the big uh, Brad Pitt zombie movie. And we went to see it, like the big premiere, and uh, it was packed. A lot of people, uh, when we were getting in, people were still trying to buy tickets for that, and uh, they only had one show in 3D, and it sold out. Uh, we actually reserved our tickets uh, beforehand so we can get in and watch it, because... Uh, my beautiful girlfriend doesn't really like horror movies, but I've always found it curious that she likes, even though it stresses her, but she really likes zombie movies, mm -hmm. and that's something I was like, when she told me that she watches The Walking Dead, I'm like, I am in love, <laughs> I am in love, I found my perfect girl. <laughs> so uh, she's the one that wanted to see World War C, and uh, she's the one that reserved the tickets. So we went to see this one because of her, and uh, I, I was like, Really, really excited that you wanted to see a zombie movie. So the the plot of World War C is that the zombie apocalypse happens. No one knows why, and they don't really explain how it started, when it started, where it started, uh, what caused it. Just all, uh, all of, it starts 
somewhere in the Middle East, but they think it started in uh, Korea and then it not. Somewhere in the jungle, I guess. And uh, through airplanes or flights, it just goes crazy. Everything gets infected. So uh, Brad Pitt's with his family. It starts very naturally that Brad Pitt uh, goes with his family in a car, and then all of a sudden, bam! Uh, they're they're uh, were they in New York or? And so Seattle. I think yeah, I think it was yeah Seattle, Philadelphia. I don't know. Uh, we don't remember. <laughs> um, but but they they're driving in their car, and all of a sudden. Uh, someone smashes their their car, and then there's this police guy saying, "You have to stay in your car." And all of a sudden, a uh, garbage truck plows its way. One of his bro- one of her brothers that went to see it uh, was like, "Where did the, that garbage truck came from?" But well, he w- he was just plowing through cars, and that that's how they make it their escape. But uh, my only complaint with the movie is that it, for a zombie movie, it doesn't have that much blood. But, because it's a zombie movie, zombie movies are supposed to be like zombie line, just blah, mountains and gallons and gallons of blood. But it kind of makes sense that they would have toned down the blood and gore because they wanted to get a, a lower rating and have more people watch it. So, that makes sense. But it makes up for it with a lot of zombies, it has a lot of zombies, and uh, it, it, so many zombies that, like in the trailer, they start, like, Forming a, a zombie mountain to get over a, a protected protected area, so you'll get a lot of zombies. Like the the amount of zombies that you get in this movie is crazy. Um, just not enough blood. That's the only thing. Like, really, no blood. But it, the movie again makes up for it for for the lack of blood with a lot of zombies and a lot of suspenseful suspenseful moments. Uh, we were in the theater like. Like biting our teeth, and she was like, uh, "Hold me, hold me," because uh, the you know Brad Pitt goes through a lot of things where really tense moments where where you're like, "Oh, how are you gonna get out of this one?" And uh, so really tense, tense movie, and uh, also goes to show that uh, in a zombie apocalypse, the people that you have to watch out for are not always the zombies, but other people. So. Uh, and <laughs> after watching Zombieland, you gotta learn a couple of the rules, you know, like buckle your seatbelt mm-hmm. and the double tap. Uh, you know, obviously it's trying to be its own thing, but after watching Zombieland, you're like, how did you not watch Zombieland? <laughs> like, buckle up when you're in a car, because you're gonna be like, whoa, I'm flying over, or, or the double tap. Don't forget the damn double tap. But, uh, yeah. It, that's that, that's something we were commenting like, oh god, wear the seatbelt. That's like one of the rules. But yeah, I, I really really like the movie. Really suspenseful movie. Um, what do you think about the whole movie thing? I like it. Yeah, she liked it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she liked it. I I thought she wanted to see it because of Brad Pitt. Because ev- all all the girls are like, no. oh, I want to see that movie because of Brad Pitt. But, uh, no, no, she, she wanted to see it because of the zombies. I like zombies. Yeah, they, they also find a very interesting way to... They don't find a cure for the zombie apocalypse. Because the, the, these type of zombies are a virus zombies. Uh, they, they don't infect you with the blood like in 28 Days Later. Uh, they, the only way you can, get, you can get infected is through a bite. I guess it's, it's something with the saliva of the zombie that they bite you and that's when you turn into a zombie. When the art, they, they revealed that when the art outbreak started, uh, it took longer for someone to turn into a zombie, but because the virus has mutated and it's grown so fast now with a bite at, uh, 10 seconds later, something like that, yeah, he, you, got, you turn into a zombie. So you're like convulsing and then blah, you turn into a... And just as before, uh, the or at least as is common with a virus zombie, uh, the only way that you can kill it is by uh, shot in the head. You shoot it in the head, or and that's it. Game over. The zombies are dead. So the way that they figure out a way to not cure people, but at least give people a fighting chance against the zombies, I thought was well, I thought it was really interesting because Brad Pitt is is looking at things and he puts two and two together and he's like, 
wait a minute. If the zombie virus is looking for live people to infect them and then make itself bigger... No, so the, the, he he figures out a way to 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 again not cure the zombie apocalypse, but at least give people a fighting chance. I thought that was that was very risky, but it makes sense. It, it makes sense, and I, I don't remember that many zombie movies where they think of something like that to to again stop people from being infected. I thought that was that was actually a very very original thing. I, I I've watched a lot of zombie movies. I haven't watched every zombie movie ever made, so maybe someone already came up with the idea, but but yeah, and it's based on a book, so now now she wants to read the book, even though I've told her that that uh, it's it's about the zombie apocalypse, but like little stories during the zombie apocalypse. So I'll get her the book uh, if I ever see it at, at, a, good, at a good price. Cause, uh, because of the movie's going to come out, it, it's really expensive. It wasn't as expensive, but now that the movies come out, come out, uh, they jacked up the price. So I promise that once I, I see it for a good price, I'll buy it for you. Okay. So, so you can read it. But it, Brad Pitt's not in the book. So. No. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so yeah, three really good movies. If all, I would recommend all three. If I had to give a score to each one, I'll give uh, Man of Steel a nine point eight, just because of some nitpicking here and there. Uh, but the movie's awesome. Monster Inc. I'll also give a 9.8. Again, just because the plot's not really that or original. It, I've seen that the plot, even though the environment's what makes it, is what makes the movie awesome. But again, it's like Porky's or Revenge of the Nerds. But still, really cool movie. And uh, World War C, I, I would give a 9.5. Again, as long as a movie entertains me, I don't think, and I don't think it sucks. As long as it's not boring, I'll 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 give a good score to a movie. So I'm not really that objective, especially because I like the movie experience. And ever since I've started going to the movies with my girlfriend, every movie's awesome. So so yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, World War C gets a nine point five just because they. They reveal the other and total destruction of a Mexican city that I'm like, oh, yeah, sure, destroy that city in Mexico, like, brrrr. And uh, because they do, and because of the indestructibility of a phone, uh, it's not a cell phone, she mentioned to me it's not a cell phone, it's a, like a satellite phone. I don't care, there, there, there's one big scene that happens in the movie that I, I don't care how advance your satellite phone is an electronic device does not survive that kind of thing but uh, but yeah it gets a 9.5 because it's still it's still exciting it's still thrilling it's still uh, has lots of zombies and because it doesn't have any blood so that's why that one goes down how much would you give Superman in a scale of 1 to 10 A nine? One yeah, to ten. Yeah. Okay, so she would give a Superman a nine. So you got nine point eight and a nine. Uh, how much would would you give us uh, Mar Monsters University? Ten. So a ten. <laughs> yeah. A ten. Yeah. So we got a ten for Monsters. And how much would you give um, World War C? Nine. So another nine. Mm -hmm. So you got uh, that's my girlfriend's score for all those three movies. We got a nine. 10, and a 9. So, yeah. So, yeah, you should definitely go watch them. Uh, some of these movies have, have released in U.S. a couple of weeks ago. Uh, usually we get uh, Mexico at least a week after it, unless it's a case like The Avengers that we get it a week before. So you've probably already watched it, but if you're not sure about any of these movies, uh, give it a watch. It's, yeah. it's, it's fun, 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 fun. And we're also showcasing our our rings here, because uh, she's my love and my life, so that's why we have our rings here. But uh, yes, it's a sappy movie. Doesn't matter. You're watching a review, and it's our review, so so yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. But um, yeah, those those are our thoughts on those three movies. Again, I apologize for not recording each review individually. 
uh, we've been super busy, and we haven't just had a time to actually sit down and record a video. And I actually convinced her to sit down with me and record this video with me. So, yeah, you get you get three for one. So I hope you guys enjoy that. And I'm 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 trying to convince her to um, be a part of more videos. So, so yeah, uh, she's a little shy and she gets a little nervous. But you'll you, I'm hoping you'll see her in all my videos in one form or or, or another. So yeah, get get used to this beautiful girlfriend here, because I, I I'm turning her into a geek, <laughs> and I'm quite proud of that. And but yeah, this was our our three for one review. Again, sorry for the delay, but uh, like always, please leave a comment at the comment section at the bottom. Uh, give me your thoughts on any of one of the movies. Uh, we still want to see The Hangover, uh, but. The the big movie franchise theater that we have here apparently didn't cough up enough money to get the distribution for uh, The Hangover Part 3. So that one, we're going to have to go to another one and, and, and see it. So expect to review on that. Uh, the next big movie that's going to come out is Pacific Rim. And I'm really excited about that one because... Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we got one more animated movie uh, to watch and review later on, and that's uh, Despicable, Despicable Me 2, or uh, Mi Villano Favorito 2, as it's going to be called here. And uh, we already got our eyes on the cups. Uh, we're going to fill our shelves with cups, but they, they, they look pretty awesome. And uh, so, yeah, we got three movies we have to watch and review. The Hangover Part 3, we need to watch that one. Uh, the Spickle Me Me 2 hasn't released, but we're going to watch that one, and Pacific Rim. So watch for a review on those three movies. We might also save them up and just make one video about all three, or or we'll think of something. But until then, like always, uh, give us your thumbs up. We really, we really like those thumbs up. Or leave a comment. Uh, if you disagree with our views, share them. We, we like the feedback. Uh, if you also thought that those movies were awesome. Also cool. We, uh, we just want to hear back from you and we want to you know, start a conversation here. So uh, this is Vargas XX78 and my girlfriend who has a username, but we're going to create her one for these videos. <laughs> uh, thanking you for your watch and signing up. Bye. Say goodbye, girlfriend. Goodbye.